Hey folks, it's Maxi here and welcome to a new TW video. You join us today for the second edition of The Romance is Dead pay-per-view. You can see last year we had the main event of Jungle Boy and Walter and that is where Jungle Boy overcame the odds to win the AW World Championship and uh, to retain his at the time, which are underground belt. Now this one we have a main event. Cody Rhodes defends the AW World Championship against John Moxley, against MJF and against Malachi Black. Will Cody be able to reign supreme? We shall find out as we head into let's see, a good run of shows here uh, next week in game and next week's video is going to be the all women show so there is some stuff here that set, sets up for that. And then we're on the road to uh, Who's House, the next event at the start of March and then of course Revolution after that. So sit back, relax and we'll go through every storyline as the video unfolds. Let's do it. So live on the AEW Plus Network, we are at the FedEx Field, sold out in front of 82,000. And we start off with some good in-ring action. It is for the Trios Championship. And it is challengers from the Rampage brand in the form of Dragon Lee, who is paired up alongside Top Flight. And they challenge Wardlow, Randy Orton and Richard Holiday. This one was a good match. Wardlow, Orton and Holiday defeat Dragon Lee in top flight in 1332 when Wardlow pinned Dante with the Splash Mountain Powerbomb. It's a third defence of the World Trios Championship, a pretty handy 84. And you can see there the better performances from the likes of Dragon Lee and Dante. And uh, yeah, Dragon Lee's a little bit stale, that's fine, we can work on that. I thought it was a good combination to put them together, but continue to make Wardlow and Richard Holiday look extremely strong. So the latest challengers for the AW Women's Tag Championships, this is another one that's predominantly mostly on Dynamite, but it's a Rampage Challenger, kind of open challenge here. So Mercedes and her protege, Roxy, took on the team of Serena Knight and Valkyrie, who have both had good runs. They both have had championship matches against Demi Bennett in recent weeks, whether on pay-per-view or in Valkyrie's case on television. But it was a good match up here, and it saw Mercedes and Roxy defeat Saraya and Valkyrie in 12-23 when Mercedes pinned Saraya, giving them their second defence of the women's title. Roxy the weak link, but she's still going to develop here. Uh, interestingly, with all these wins, Mercedes is like most momentum ever. Her popularity is probably sky high as well. And a, a very good 81 segment. So, good match up there in the women's division. After that, we hear from Britt Baker and Anna Jay. And they just say, it's very nice that, you know, Mercedes has decided to adopt this little Roxy as a protege, but they've got no time for kind of looking out for people. They are going to try and become the AW Women's Tag Team Champions. So basically, we're going to make it like a kind of multi person tag match because obviously that's two heel teams. I want to get some baby faces in there as well, but making it something proper, good, and big for the Women's Tag Team Championships. So a 71 there. Also in the AEW Women's Division, we had the Queen of AEW Championship on the line. It was former champion Yuka Sakazaki who challenged Ty Mello. And here we had a good matchup. Great even wrestling. As Ty Mello defeated Yuka in 13-36 with uh, Ty Agoshi. It was the 11th defence of the Queen of AEW Championship. Again, just getting as much prestige to that belt as we can get. Made it steal the show. 87 from Yuka, a 76 from Ty. Still decent. So I think if we take away the psychology penalty here, you could probably look at that being an 84, maybe an 85. So good work there. It shows that MD that's had a run with the Queen of AEW throne is basically good enough to go straight to the top two brands. But I realise I just need to keep gaining the prestige in that belt and I don't want to keep hot potato on it as much. So a lot of good reigns there. And Time Ellis run at the moment is pretty good. But then I have a segment here. So... We well, obviously had Mayu versus Veronica before, so this one I basically had basically the two of them in the ring and Veronica says there's all this thing that I can't wrestle because well, obviously all her stats technically are under 36. So she's like, you know what, I want to prove I'm better than you, I'm going to beat you at this big event next week, but I'm going to show you that I really can wrestle and we're going to make it two out of three falls. I'm going to beat you once, I'm going to beat you twice, and I'm going to show I'm the better woman. So, in theory... If we Veronica win, then she could lose a fall and it still wouldn't count to the record. Or Mayu could beat her once and twice and we go for there. So I'm intrigued to see how I book it. I think it's probably obvious how I'm going to book it. But it's a good way to get a cheap 100 segment 
and that's going to be main event next week's show because of how good they've done. Uh, and you can see as well, by the way, uh, Ian Riccoboni's on a commentary team now. Um, even though I said he was pretty weak, he was probably the better guy for the job. Excalibur has a better rating for um, colour, as does Morrow for some reason, but I put these two here, gives me my cheap 100 rating so I can put all the pressure on the main event. But looking forward to seeing how they do in a, a longer match next week and seeing hopefully the longer match helps the skill set of Veronica as well develop. That's a bit underwhelming, I thought this would do better, but anyway. Swerve taking on all comers in the TNT division and what was the former champion, Takeshita, who stepped up. Super match up here as Swerve defeated Takeshita in 23-12 with the Swerve Stomp. Third defence of the belt, a 78, an 82 played an 85 in terms of in-ring performances. But Swerve continues the run forward towards Who's House. Now had some words from Will Osprey. Now this is quite an interesting little programme I've been booking. I had a match up with him and Hangman a couple of weeks ago. They do not have chemistry, but I wanted to continue the feud anyway. And Will Osprey just basically says, Brov, what's happening? I've been terrible recently. It was a terrible accent. But he just says, I've not been the true Will Osprey. I've not been the elite guy that I can be. If I can beat people like Hangman and Page, I show that I should be right back in this picture towards becoming AW World Champion. Simple, effective, 85. I know I've not really booked but Will Osprey great. He's probably some good matches, but programme-wise, not too great. As I say, they had a fantastic heat with their match, great wrestling. Osprey defeats Hangman in 13 24 by Stormbreaker, gives him a lot more pop, gives him some momentum. 75, I know they weren't going to click, I just wanted to kind of conclude that, so good win for Osprey. Moving further on, Anna decided to give Venny an opportunity for the AEW Women's Championship because she's been ever impressive, and here is a superb wrestling match, great heat. Demi Bennett defeats Venny in 14 27 with Riptide. And it's a fifth defence of the Women's Championship for Demi Bennett. What I've took here is just Demi putting on really good matches. Some will have a psychology penalty, some won't. But I'm hoping as she gets older and older and more matches, that psychology stat can help us help her and develop. That's why she gets the 87s when she's like some Mayu buzz with her that can carry the match through that. So we'll see how it goes. But 79 because of that penalty, and 84 and a 90, so they do bring good performances. So this is an interesting one, with Chris Jericho and Dwight Johnson. I'll cover a lot of things, I'll cover something I touched on in the last video as well. The plan was, because at the time of recording, CM Punk is going to return at Collision. He's probably done that by now, unless something really bad's happened. So I thought, I'll bring Punk back, because he's back. I honestly didn't think he would come back, so that's why I'm like, I'll bring him back. And then from there, he's not going to wrestle. We'll just have him as a manager, basically the voice of the voiceless. Because I was so convinced he wasn't coming back, I had completely destroyed his morale. He doesn't want to speak to us. So I was like, cool, I still want to have someone as the voice of the voiceless. But, or like a manager to carry these younger talents, but who can it be? So what I did is, it's now going to be Chris Jericho. Because Chris Jericho is going to turn heel here, and he's going to get God Complex. And he says, I've done various things over my career, world champion, Ojo, or a champion. I want to be God. I want to be the man just starts so many careers. I want to be known like Paul Heyman, I want to be known like Bobby the Brain Heenan, I want to be the greatest manager and steer a new generation into this company to take care of all, all these guys that have just hogged the spotlight for so long. So over week and weeks you're going to see these younger talents come through and they're going to beat your favourites. This leads to Dwayne coming out, because Dwayne just does whatever he wants in this save. He basically just says, well that's cool, we spoke to TK, we know you've had authority previously here in AEW. We're stripping you of that, so that's not going to happen. So, yeah, cool. You can go on this managerial thing, but consider your powers of authority over and done with. And while I'm here, let's make some good vibes for next week. Confirming, uh, Dwayne also says basically confirming that we're going to have a fatal four way, possibly, maybe even a six. We're going to have a multi woman match. We'll say that, because I can change my mind over the booking. For the vacant Shine Championship, because of injury to Chris Statlander, which I kind of forgot to mention. So that's, so that's vacant. I have an idea who I want to put it onto, but we'll see how that goes. We're going to see the multi-woman matchup for the Women's Tag Team Championships. He's confirmed, obviously, the champs are in it. And also, we're going to see Britt and Anna J. Who else we see? We'll see how we feel. And on Dynamite, etc., 
we're going to determine who deserves to face Debbie Bennett for the Women's Championship. A.K.A. I don't know right now. So, well, that's just my way of him blabbering through, getting positive PR to say we've got a lot of stuff planned for next week, which is still up in the air. But hopefully, I get a confident the women's show can deliver because there's a lot of talents that I've been booking, obviously, on television that haven't had many pay-per-views that maybe need that spotlight. So anyway, opportunity gimmick for Chris to God Complex from Holding Pensioner. Uh, oh no, oh no, Tony, that does both. It's been a while. Uh, Chris Jericho is now using the God Complex, which is initial rate. Great. Ah, uh, perfect. Ah, uh, that was too compromised. Shit. That's not good. Didn't get there particularly well. Uh, the reason is I've got more, more turns coming. Which have as many angles. As he had. Anyway, moving on, uh, because we have such a great tag division, I thought let's just keep having number one contenders matches to book future tag team championship matches. So here we had Proud and Powerful, the Lucha Brothers back together, FTR and the Young Bucks. We had a superb wrestling match here with good heat. And it saw the Lucha Brothers defeat Proud and Powerful, FTR and the Young Bucks in 1855 to become the new number one contenders when Ray Phoenix pinned, or sorry, submitted Ortiz. So you can see there are so many good performances there. Santana and Ortiz, the weakest of the lot. But great stuff there from the Young Bucks. Great stuff from the Lucha Bros. And an 88 was the final result. So the Lucha Bros will get a Tag Team Championship match down the line. And Ortiz is not celebrating a victory. But Santana is just sick of Ortiz losing. He's fed up him. He's stale. That's why he was turning heel here. And the 67 rating... Three segments, I think that's not good. I think four is probably your way with. Uh, aye. That went badly as well. Sorry, Santana. But it's another one. Like, I was a massive fan of Santana and Ortiz. I felt like Santana was fantastic. Again, it looked like he was never coming back. Then there was the fight for him where he might be. It could have changed it again by the time this goes live. But it seems like he wanted to do a singles run. I'm going to try and book him in one to see how it goes. We then have a little montage of some inspirational training. So basically what I've been doing is Kaito Kaio Mia has been basically earning the respect of Walter for a lot of great matches, just proper brawls, just properly mauling their opponents. Won a match up to get the Tag Team Championship match tonight, which you'll see Kaio Mia and Walter take on with Faction and Gobba Nablis for the Tag Team belt. So 73 it's just him floating to impress Walter in that segment. This could do well. Could do poor. It did really well. I'm happy with that. Not quite the 100 I was looking for, but still spectacular nonetheless. Superb wrestling match and great heat, which gives us a life action and Gobern Abla is defeating Onslaught. I really struggled for a tag name. In 1342, when Rush pinned Kyoto Kayumiya with La Lanza. The ninth defence of the AW World Tag Team Championships. Three performances over 90, Kayama, uh, Kayomiya, just with an 84, but still spectacular stuff. I'd love them to go solo runs, but they are they are doing so well for me, uh, LFI. And this tag run has been absolutely fantastic. But another win there, made it steal the show, just said to him, go all out for 14 minutes, let's see what we can do. And they probably could have main event even given a 100 rated show, but World Championship must main event. We hear first from Mox. It just says John Moxley's here and he's ready to get that championship back around his waist. He does that thing where he keeps kind of like moving his muscles a bit and stretching that kind of stuff. You know what Mox promo is like at this point. He's like he's going to completely beat the crap out of Cody Rhodes, MGF and Malachi Black. He's going to basically put a lot of pain in a lot of these guys. Um, I don't think psychology will cover this so I'm prepared for this to flop. But I feel like it's guys that all deserve world championship opportunity. Oh, it didn't half. What? Yikes. I've dropped, I've dropped my remote control in, <laughs> in shock at how bad that was. Sorry for the earphone users, but... Uh, yeah, this didn't work. I don't know. Maybe I should be moving my World Championship more towards tag team wrestlers at this point. But anyway, we'll cover it. Fantastic Heat, great wrestling. Cody Rhodes defeats Moxley, MGF and Malachi Black. In 1430, when Cody pinned Malachi with the crossroads, we also had Richard Holiday run in and attack Moxley to obviously stop him from getting the win. 
Cody steals the fourth defence of the belt. 81, 88, 84, 84. This doesn't seem great. MGF is off his game at 79 overall. I made a wild brawl. Anything else that kind of negatives? Couple of inconsistencies, two of all morales, three, uh, three inconsistencies, two of all morales. So shame it ended that way, but they deserved an opportunity. As I say, thanks to the boost and the heavy promo from our Italian Veronica, uh, we managed to gain, or not lose any popularity, which is good, I suppose. So, overall, I'm still quite happy with it. This is a lot of positives in there. As I say, I'm really happy with the tag team stuff there. Uh, and a few things we've got going towards next week's show. So, yeah, sorry for dropping my remote control and disgust. <laughs> uh, thank you very much for watching. Remember to check out the Goodwill Software forums and the Fancy Booker subreddit. And hopefully I'll see you next week for the women's pay-per-view, which is our time machine, I believe it's called. I keep messing around with names, that's how I keep forgetting half of them are called. But anyway, as I say, thanks for watching. Stay safe. Bye-bye.